This special edition of Let's Edit with Media Composer is brought to you by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And I thought we'd have some fun in this lesson. And as you can see in front of you, what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the look of the Lego Batman movie. And when I was coming up with the concept for this tutorial, I was thinking, okay, well, how am I going to go about doing this? Should I use BCC's extruded text? Should I make all the text in Illustrator and then import that as an EPS and extrude that? And then it occurred to me, you know what? I can do all of this work right from within BCC Title Studio, a fantastic, essentially, application that you have access to either inside or outside of Media Composer to do this exact type of work. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to get in and use this versatile plugin in this tutorial. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so as I mentioned in the introduction, you have the ability to work with Title Studio inside of Avid Media Composer or as a standalone application. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside of this lesson. I'm just going to launch the standalone version of Title Studio. My project settings are all set to go, except I'm going to turn on the hold parameter values right here. Okay. I'm now going to come down and say OK, and we're now going to be greeted with a completely empty project. So let's now get in and I'm going to tackle the background first. So let's add a new 3D container to our project. And inside of this 3D container, we're actually going to add another 3D container because inside of this 3D container here that I'm going to rename, we're going to call this yellow Lego background. Okay. And inside of our yellow Lego background 3D container, we are going to add an image file to it. I'm going to take the Lego JPEG from the desktop. We're just going to bring it in. And I think I'm going to take the size of this and just make it a little bit bigger. So let's take the master scale. I'm just going to drag it up. We'll put it somewhere about 150, I think. I think 154 is probably fine. I'm also just going to put the quality at the best quality here, at high quality. All right, so let's also zoom back on our canvas here. I'm just going to use the mouse wheel to zoom back. Now, you might notice that there's something interesting going on with the lighting here. It's not exactly even. It's a little bit brighter over here than it is over here. What's important to keep in mind is that with the main scene in your Title Studio project, you actually have lights associated with them. Now, right now, I only have one light turned on. And what I'm going to do with this light is I'm going to position it right about there, and I'm going to put its intensity down at about 60%. I think that's okay because we're actually going to add another light into the mix. Now, you'll see as soon as I add it in, super overblown because we got two lights obviously going on here. But once I bring this light down to about the same, down to about 60%, I'm not going to be too precise, 56 is fine. You'll notice that we now have a fairly even lighting layout across this Lego background. So I think this is pretty good. Now something else that I want to do as well with this Lego background is I want to position it a little bit farther back in the frame. I think I'm going to put it back at about... Let's put it back somewhere about 50. I think that's pretty good because we're going to have our text sitting a little bit in front of this background just so that when it rotates, it stands out a little bit. Okay, we're now ready to get in and add our text. So let's do that. Now, we want to make sure that we don't have our yellow Lego background container selected. We want to put our text in our main container. Okay, so with the main container selected, we're now going to add some extruded text. Now, something I want to mention about the technique we're going to do here, we're actually going to build this in three parts. I'm not going to try to build, uh, you know, the Lego and then Batman and movie all within one text element. We're going to do it as three separate text elements. But because we're going to be duplicating each one of the elements, I'm going to get the first element exactly the way that I want it so that when I duplicate it, those duplicated elements will carry the same parameters over 
So I'm really only going to be doing the job one time. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. You can see the text is already set up here, DKC forever, and I'm just going to type in the Lego. Now, what's important to keep in mind about the Lego is that I want to adjust the kerning in between each letter. Now, I could just adjust the tracking to space everything out uniformly, but with a lot of text, you end up getting letters that, are, you know, the, the kerning is a little bit closer than others. So for me, I just like to do this the old fashioned way here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, what's important to keep in mind as well is you want to put a pretty good space in here because we're not keeping this text at 75 point size. We're going to put it down at about 25. Okay. And we're also going to position it sort of up here. So once we start repositioning the text, you're going to notice the spacing will, because of perspective, change a little bit. Now, that might be a little bit much. So we can come in here and just adjust it a little bit. And I think that's pretty good right there. Okay, so let's get our material looking the way that we want. So with the Lego, we're gonna come down to our front material and I'm going to come back to my controls tab and let's adjust the diffusion color to make it black. Okay, there we go, our text is now black. But what we want to do is we want to get in and adjust the bevel as well. I'm going to come back to the main Lego layer and I'm going to come down to the material and I'm going to add three materials. So we're now going to have a front material, a bevel material, and an extrusion material. And you can see they've been added down here. There's the front, there's the extrusion, there's the bevel. Now for the extrusion color, it's going to be white. And so is the bevel color as well. Now the bevel might be a little bit much right now, but we'll find out in just a second. That's actually not too bad. I'm actually kind of happy with the way that that looks. Okay, so because I'm happy with this one here, we're going to duplicate the Lego and we're going to do the movie next. Okay, so it's actually going to be the Lego and I'm just going to type in movie. Okay, now as soon as I do, you'll notice that that updates immediately down here in my timeline. Okay, now I also want to make sure that the movie is placed right below the Lego because we want to keep our stacking order as close to being the same as possible. Now we also also want to make sure that we grab the right layer that we're moving here. There we go, movie. I'm just going to put it roughly over there. Now one thing I'm also going to do is I'm just going to reposition these lights a little bit more out of the frame here. Just so they're not impacting the text too much. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I don't mind if the background's a little bit darker. Okay. So last but certainly not least, we need the big one. We need our Batman here. So let's get in. We're going to type in Batman. And we're going to have this text up at about 75 point size. Okay, perfect. I'm going to reposition Batman right about there. That's looking good. Let's position him over here after the Lego movie here. We'll actually put the Lego movie at the top. There we go. And we're just going to position now movie right up underneath Batman. We're going to position the Lego right down on top of Batman. And so now we have the Lego Batman movie. Now, let me just come in. I just want to just double check my extrusions here. My extrusions at about 1.5. I think I'm going to put that up at about 3. Give it a little bit more of an extrusion here. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, let's talk about the actual animation now because we're at the point where we're ready to animate this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the main scene 3D container. And what's important to keep in mind is that by taking this element, the container, and rotating it, everything inside it's going to rotate along with it, including the lights that are attached to the scene. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to save this for right now and we're going to call this, I'm actually just going to call this the Lego Batman Revised. Okay. And I'm going to say save. So let me show you what's going to go on here. With the scene selected, I'm going to navigate over here to the toolbar and I'm going to select the rotate interactor. Okay, I love these on-screen widgets. Okay, now we're going to come back to our main con container position and as soon as I do, the widget will appear on the screen. Now you'll notice that depending on what I hover over will determine what I can do to the element. Okay. It's very, very cool. And very easy to use. Okay, so let's just position this roughly where we're going to want it. I'm going to put it about there. I think what I'm also going to do with the whole scene itself 
is we're just going to zoom in or scale in on it just a little bit. Now, I want to make sure that what I do to one, I'm doing to everything here. I don't want to accidentally do it on the X or the Y or the Z and not do it to the other one because then it will just look a little bit weird. Okay, so let's now get in and let's animate this. Okay, we're going to make sure that we have our keyframe interpolation set to be linear. Okay, once it's set to linear, I'm going to come right down to the end. It doesn't matter how long our animation is because once we get into Media Composer, we're going to let the duration of where we're going to apply this to determine how long the animation is going to be. Once we get to this point here, I'm simply going to turn back on my keyframe interpolation to be linear. And we're now going to take our element and we're just going to rotate it. Okay, nothing too fancy. We're going to rotate it to about there. I'm just going to grab the right widget here. There we go. And we're just going to rotate this across. There we go. Kind of like that. That's looking pretty good. And you'll now see that if I come back, we now have an animation of the Lego Batman movie. Now, of course, this is not playing back in real time, and you can see whereabouts we are as it previews, but I just want to preview it so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like when we get into Media Composer. Okay, and I think this is looking pretty darn good. Okay, I'm just going to stop it by hitting the space bar, and we're going to save this out again so that we have the final Lego Batman revised and you'll see it's called, called .blu. And what I'm now going to do is quit out of Title Studio and let's get into Media Composer and let me show you how we're going to take this and apply it to something in our timeline. All right, we're now in Media Composer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a standard title as my background. I think I'm going to make this, I don't know, let's make it 14 seconds, okay? And I'm just going to take that. We're just going to drop it into our timeline and we're going to come to the Effects Palette. And I could just type in BCC title. And you'll see Title Studio will come up right away as part of the 3D objects category. I'm just going to take the effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the title. Now, we're just going to step into effects mode. I'm going to launch the Title Studio UI. I'm going to navigate up to the file drop down. I'm going to say open project. Inside of the open project window, I'm just going to select the Lego Batman revised. I'm going to say open and there's my animation all set to go. And it's even taken the animation and stretched it out to fill the entire new duration of the clip it's being applied to. And all I have to now do is say apply. What I'm gonna do is just make sure that I'm in best quality here. I'm now gonna give this a quick render. Now, to be honest, this is 3D extruded text in a 3D application. You'd think that this is gonna take a good few minutes to render, but if you take a look, it's actually only going to take me less than a minute to render this fairly complex animation. This is a good almost 15 seconds long, and it's only going to take me a minute to render this. Now remember, in a lot of cases to create something like this, you're going out to Adobe's After Effects to render to basically to get out to create, to render, to re-import. I've done all of it inside of Title Studio. Now keep in mind, I did it outside of Media Composer. The technique works exactly the same if you were to do it from within Media Composer as well. And the great thing is, is that once it's done, we can step out of effects mode, hit home to jump back to the beginning, hit play, and there's our animation looking fantastic right from within our Media Composer timeline. All right, so I hope this tutorial has shown you why Title Studio is such a fantastic tool to utilize from outside of Media Composer as well as inside of Media Composer. And with a little bit of thought, you can be creating some very cool animations lightning quick without having the need to leave your nonlinear editing application. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.